called The Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I'm Danny. I'm Feats and Beats. And Rob couldn't be here today. <laughs> uh, so, what's first on the agenda, Danny? Uh, shots. There we go. What do we got here, a little Jack Daniels? To Rob. Cheers, Rob. <laughs> Blue. Bluey. That was not a pleasant chaser to chase Jack with a uh, fucking Sailor Jerry and orange juice. Woo! Okay. Oh. Bro, it tastes disgusting in my mouth right now. <laughs> you went from Jack Daniels to oh, orange juice and Sailor Jerry's? That was not... bad. That was that was a bad call, Mark. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Like, I saw this happening. <laughs> I, the, what, what are you doing over there in the kitchen? Um... What are you drinking? Like I didn't Ooh. see you put Sailor in the juice. So wait, uh, it's just orange juice. Wait, yeah. No, there's Sailor Jerry in there, and you're taking shots. Right on, man. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good be a, one. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> so Rob's not with us. Uh, just physically, he's still here spiritually. Uh, <laughs> I'm rocking the flannel. With us. That wasn't like he's a, just not that here wasn't today. like a weird announcement for Rob. <laughs> 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 <So>. <laughs> Oh shit! But yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're live, folks. <laughs> live on TV. <laughs> oh no. Anyways, guys, Rob couldn't be here today. Uh, we'll see if he's here next week. <laughs> So, uh, um, any updates? We got a show coming up? Yes, we have a show coming up November 25th, guys. We'll be playing again in Rancho Cucamonga at Goodfellas Bar and Grill. If you're around, please come by. Uh, people really dug the first show. So, I, I hear, you know what I mean? I hear I've heard good things. Liked it. Yeah, I heard yeah. <laughs> a few people liked it, so that's good. Yeah. Um, very excited to play that, playing with, what, like four other bands? Yeah, there's, yep. there's a few. Yeah. We're uh, uh, first. Yes, we do. We are opening that show. So get there early. Even if we weren't opening, get there when it starts. Watch everybody play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Might find your new favorite band. You never, Us. You never know. <laughs> so what do we got? What are we doing here? Uh, uh, well, let's see what we got. What's today on the agenda? Slipknot news, right? Bro, Slipknot news. Josh, you, you, you can start this one being a drummer. Yeah, what do you think Go about it, it all? Very depressing and sad news for me, but... Um, I don't want to say Jay was a very, very fantastic drummer, meaning Jay Weinberg, but Jay Weinberg is no longer in Slipknot. And the way he found out to me was kind of a, a shocker and a gut punch of a phone call. At, yeah, and you're no longer in the band, bro. At Creative Differences. Yeah. There's more behind that, I think. Like, There's got to be, dude. There's got to be something. Creative Differences is, is an easy way. Yeah. You know, to just say it's not working out. Because of whatever reason, but you just put creative differences there and it works out nicely. Yeah. So my Seems like you know my my fandom of Slipknot starts with Jay as their drummer already. Really? I I I like discovered Slipknot during Jay's era and then I went back listening to the older stuff. Yeah. So that was just crazy. Like, you know, just knowing his story into getting into the band, you know, it was just really fucking cool. Yeah. And uh it's just it's a bummer, dude. I don't Creative differences. Who knows? We'll never. Who knows? If we'll ever know the real story in that. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I mean, uh, at this point, I mean, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Decisions were made. Things are happening. That's it. You know. Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, I mean, we'll see the way <laughs> the way things ended there, but hopefully I saw they're that, all still friends and wish each other well. Man. Oh, absolutely. You know? <laughs> so. I saw a video talking about who would be the replacement. Yeah. And I was kind of it was kind of funny because everybody that threw like names in the hat, most of the drummers that people were like. That'll be the next Slipknot drummer. All of them were ex Stone Sour drummers, so it was kind of funny. Like it was like, really? Are you just, <laughs> are you just throwing the name in the mix because there's that connection and that's it? Like, is this person even right for that job? You know? Yeah. So I don't. It's not like it's not like it, those, those aren't easy shoes to fill. You know? My theory, even though I'm probably wrong anyway, they've always talked about the band continuing on as like a machine, members would come and go. Corey's talked about he's getting too old for it. What if, so to speak, they're already setting up the idea of Corey stepping away eventually and his son Griffin takes over. Yeah. And right now with Sean's son, 
He plays drums? Yeah, he's a drummer for yeah. Vended. Okay. So oh, he's, yeah, that's right. It's Baltimore right now. Yeah. They're already touring, doing stuff, and it would right. be basically, okay, father, son, drum team. And Corey's kid sounds fucking just like him, dude. Oh, he's, he's good. so I've good, heard, dude. I've, I've heard he's it. I'm like, so fucking good. That yeah. would be kind of cool. Like, they're just kind of... Kind of how like Ghost does the new Pope thing. Here's here's mm-hmm. the whole new band. <laughs> like, yeah, when I new... when I first heard that uh, their son's band were doing stuff, at first I was kind of like I had the notion like, are they are they getting like to this point because of who you know? Mm. And when I heard the band, I was like, oh, that's not it at all. They're yeah. really good, really good. So yeah, yeah. they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, well there it is. They're yeah. just really good. So there it goes. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, that's a that's a bummer, dude. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where they go from here. I've seen Slipknot with, uh, I'm not probably not every drummer, because I'm sure there was a period of time before Jay where they had some people. Do they have anybody fill in at all? Not really. Like, they didn't do any shows. Well, so then I, I've, but I've seen Slipknot with Jay and with Joey. And um, I like, I've seen, the first time I saw Slipknot was, I think it was OzFest. It was, it had to be 99. Mm. It was in high school. Like, we got up at like, I think six in the morning to go and be there at 9 a.m. because they were opening up on the, the mm-hmm. small stage. <laughs> like it was at the time, Slipknot was nobody. Yeah. Like I think, nobody I think they were. you and Rob went to this show, right? I think yeah. Rob remember, I think Rob told me, yeah, I think I remember a, you guys talking about this. There was a big group of our friends and everybody, we all knew who Slipknot was before they kind of really got big and we yeah. were all just like, dude, they're playing like, holy shit, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was cool. So I've uh, seen them, I've seen them there. I've seen them at the, the, uh, Palace in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I've seen him at Devor, you know. So I mean, I, I've seen him at the Forum. I've seen him so many different places and different size venues, and every single time it's been an amazing show. So I think, I think honestly, I think that they're going to be good moving on. They're going to find somebody and it works. And you know, uh, I think I saw them in 2019 when they played over here with uh, Gojira, and we went to the same show. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, 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 we, yeah. we, we realized that, that we went to the same show. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first and only time seeing Slipknot. That was, fuck, dude. Did you guys Holy hear hell. did you guys hear the statement from Jay that he put out over the weekend? Uh yes, I okay. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I think Josh sent it to me actually. Yeah. yeah. I just I read it and I was kinda like, he class act, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, did. he just okay, that's what it is. He could have been like well, I mean, he was a like, fucking yeah, phone call. He could have literally yeah. been like he could have literally been like, dude, a fucking phone call after all this, you know? Like I said, details we'll never know. I'm not going to be weird, fucking creepy fan about it. You know, when fans get all fucking weird and tribal about shit. Oh, and butthurt. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, the thing is, is you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So to be mad about it, I mean, it could be something that's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. You never know. I don't know. People are always feel to be, be the need to be the first to take a stance or a side. On, I've online. always liked Slipknot. I'm going to check out what they put out next. You know? Same Regardless here. to, I mean, if Corey's not the singer or not, I, I'll... I'll check it out. Yeah. You know? As a drummer, Josh, who are a few drummers that you know of that you would maybe like to see in that position? He's like, me. He's all, me. <laughs> <laughs> me. That'd be I, the correct answer. That'd be awesome, but I think I'd even have fun just teching for one of those dudes just yeah. to be up there on that stage and, like, be a part of that whole thing. I think the fanboy, I mean, would be too nervous to actually play. Uh. Um, there's quite a few drummers that I think could actually fit that spot. It's more of the, like you're saying, the fans of who's going to be okay with filling those shoes because you still have fans that think Jay just, the the attitude of he left because he couldn't play that. Yeah. That's not really what happened. Like he had his own flair for stuff, played his own style, which could go towards the creative differences. Maybe they wanted to go back to heavier and he just wasn't the type of guy for it. Yeah. If I had a choice, I'd pick freaking um, Mario from Gojira. Yeah. Okay. Because Jesus. that guy could still add some tom flows. Like, you almost wouldn't need the other two percussionists with just him. He jumps <laughs> by himself. Like, hey, you guys just take this song off. Yeah. I'm going to do oh, this one. We need one. Cake Guy, though, dude. <laughs> we can't get rid of Cake Guy. <laughs> but, cake like, guy. Um, Austin Archery from Lorna Shore. He okay, yeah. One. Like, there's all kinds of guys coming up. It's yeah. more of... Who would want to take on that responsibility? Because you couldn't just hop in and, hey, I'm going to play these songs. Somebody somebody also mentioned the dude, uh, 
from Spain, the guy on TikTok. Yeah, that yeah. dude's yeah. awesome, dude. Have you seen his video? <laughs> dude, I saw a video of him doing today where he was doing the one, one, two, three, four. Yeah, on every different loop. Oh, yeah. Dude, have you nuts. seen his response video to Jay being fired? Yeah, yeah. I have not. Whole, yeah, he, he has like an eight, ten minute video and he's talking about, yeah, the people even asked me, did they email you? <laughs> Fuck He's, no! He was pretty much like, I am not. not like, didn't he say something like, I'm not that good? Yeah, you're I'm, like, I'm good, but you're I like, can bro, then who is that good? Like, holy shit, because that dude's amazing, right? I mean, yeah. I literally saw him play with three sticks and I never saw the third stick come out from anywhere. It just appeared in his hand. I was like, what the fuck is going on? This guy's got three sticks in his hand right now. Usually hides in the pocket, the t shirt or whatnot. Oh but yeah, that God, dude would be a perfect fit. Yeah, that oh. gotta be awesome. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he would be able to jump right in there. <laughs> yeah. So, having talking about in his Instagram post, another Instagram story that we <laughs> that I saw that blew my fucking mind this week, guys, was apparently there was like a daycare center running a baby fight ring. So essentially baby fight club, dude. First of all, it's fucked up. Don't do that. <laughs> make, it, make, it, make it really don't clear because we're about to go somewhere. You probably don't think we're going to go, but don't do that. Okay. <laughs> so when we talk about daycare, like baby fight club, like let's. What exactly you mean? I mean, like, are kids wrestling or are we throwing blows? Like, I don't know, dude. I'm, I don't know. You know, like, it's one of those things where, like, we'll just, I guess, I don't, I don't think they'll ever release the footage, you know, like, to know, like, what they were doing. But, like, you know, in a playpen cage fighting? Okay, league? that was me, my next question. Are they in, like, a playpen? Like, do they put them in a so ring? Just put a couple kids in a playpen and one throw, juice throw box. some money in the pot? Like, Bro, dude. yeah, right. One juice box. So I picture like two babies, like UFC style, dude. They got the little shorts and the little gloves on, and they're fucking ready to go. And all the little little babies throwing money in the circle, get fucking fucking Hezbollah in there, and the just, Hezbollah, and the like, rest, just dude. get in there and just beating the crap out of the little babies. <laughs> That's Hezbollah versus kids in daycare, dude. <laughs> A midget fight club. Do we know where this took place? I oh, dude, I, I don't. Was remember it in where the U.S.? Place. Yeah, I believe it was in okay. the U.S. Yes. Hey, what do you what do you think, Rob? Yeah, what do you think, Rob? Huh? <laughs> Fucking bluey. This guy's not saying shit today. It's a good hat, though. That's a nice hat. You can find that in the link in our bio. <laughs> bio. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Okay. <laughs> I when you said <clears throat> when you told me the baby fight club thing, I just there's so many things that questions. You yeah. know, it's it's the like oh that's really fucked up, and then there's like the comedy aspect of it where you're like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I think really quickly it goes from what the hell into. Holy shit, that's insane. Yeah, you know? too, they should probably, uh, you know, do a movie or something. I was about to say that. I think, isn't this just like Daddy Daycare or whatever? <laughs> yeah, the Eddie Murphy true. movie with Baby Fight Club? Oh, dude. So how many babies can you take? <laughs> I knew this question was coming, dude. How many babies can you take on at the same so time? So if we're, we got to establish an age range of kids that we're going to be fighting. Babies with katana blades. Go. Oh, shit. They got weapons? That's they got like, weapons, That's bro. like roosters with razor blades on their talons, bro. And they're fucking feet, dude. Like, what the fuck? Isn't that what um, they're doing? They're so, but like, on the we're talking toddlers. Three years old? Two, three, four? Let's go three. Three years old. With katana blades. No. Okay, without katana blades, how many waves are we doing? Like, like, and like does it come? Is it one kid at a time attacking me? Because I can go all day. This needs to be like a VR game. <laughs> like, bro, I'm really afraid we're going to get canceled for this one, but here we go. Fucking comedy fucking, people. Fucking, it's comedy, dude. Comedy. For comedy reasons. Uh, so what? Like, let's say like waves of five. It goes up in increments of five. It goes up in increment each round. Yeah, dude. And they're all coming at you at once, busting through the windows and through the doors, through the chimney. Come so I you. think like maybe about like forty of them would take me down to the floor, but I could still fight for like another two rounds <laughs> from the floor, you know. Okay. <laughs> Are we taking? It's gonna be bad. Sex, <laughs> sex, and ethnicity into consideration. Oh does this doesn't? Is, no, ethnicity. Oh, is, there a, is there a factor there? Is there a factor? Are we, are we... Like, what if it's a bunch so of lazy? So if it's just a bunch of little like lazy white kids versus. <laughs> Damn lazy white. Five kids. little samurai Asians coming after you. Like. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, I 
fucking sit. Like forty little cholo babies, dude. Just yeah, coming it's you, like dude. think <laughs> about gang it. Gang banging babies, dude. Babies getting down, dude. <laughs> Like it's sock checking us. What dude? kind of babies we talking here? Oh fuck, dude! <coughs> My fucking head hurts, dude. <laughs> babies. Oh, dude. Yes. Yeah, so anyways, canceled. don't start don't a baby do fight, fight clubs. Club. Um, this is not oh, good. Oh fuck, dude! I'm fucking crying. Okay, <laughs> what's, what's the next subject, Danny? <laughs> no baby fight clubs and no dogs and pigs. Let's do it. Let's go for a hot take. <clears throat> Let's, Let's go do for a hot take. Okay, so hot takes. Hot takes. I got, we oh, have a whoa, new whoa, version whoa, whoa. of hot takes we're doing. What are we doing? Want to explain, Danny, what's going on here for the people who are only listening? Um, well, we got a game called Hot Takes, and I think we're going to read a hot take. Read a hot take, and then we'll debate it. What side do you land on? Go, Danny. Men should not wear skinny jeans. So I just bought a pair for the last show we did. <laughs> So the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Is your answer? I get your answer. Would be I yes. mean, I mean, they were technically skinny jeans, but I don't think they look like skinny jeans on me. One, because I'm not skinny. <laughs> they're not like, skinny jeans. And they don't not make skinny me look jeans, skinny. bro. But like, it was just because of the material. They were like kind of like stretchy. Dude, by the way, those fucking pants were awesome. Dude. <laughs> they fucking they fit me so well. So much room for activities. I like that. What activities you're doing? <laughs> you know, bro. Pants stuff, dude. Skinny, stretchy jeans. Aren't those called jeggings? Jeggings. Is that what they are? Yeah. For what women. about you? What about you, Danny? Skinny jeans? Yes, no? Uh, no, I'm good. No? It's... I it's, can't wear skinny because it's uncomfortable it's if uncomfortable. I sit, so I go with slim. Slim. Not skinny. Slim. Do it. Do it? Do it. Here's another hot take, folks. A grizzly bear would win in a fight against a gorilla. I False. disagree. False. Yes. Let me give you my reason first. Okay. So, if a bunch of gorilla babies are fighting, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what the? <laughs> gorilla baby fight Funny. club. <laughs> gorilla baby fight club. Against real baby fight club. Dude, gorillas are so fucking strong, dude. I don't think people realize how fucking strong gorillas are. You know what I mean? They're at least twice my strength, Haven't bro. you seen King Kong? Bro. Uh, uh, yeah. I just... I mean, the grizzly bear might fuck it up, like scratch it for a bit, but once a gr once that gorilla grabs its arm, he's ripping that shit off. You know what I mean? Like that's how strong they are. Yeah, yeah. I what think, do you think? I think a gorilla's gonna take it. I think there's I think there's gonna be a point where the gorilla realizes that the bear ain't playing, and then he steps into I ain't playing, and like you said, we're we're uh, we're fucking shit up. And that's where the katana comes <laughs> up. <laughs> you know? Well, you judge. <laughs> Grizzly bear with a katana. You like this, huh? Dude, you broke him, bro. If there was, if, dude, I'm imagine like a grizzly, a grizzly bear on the loose with a katana, bro. Cocaine, he cocaine bear. I was thinking right now, cocaine bear might take out grizzly bear. Might take out a gorilla. You mean a gorilla? Yeah, yeah cocaine bear. Uh, cocaine. Dude, cocaine bear versus a gorilla. Yeah, I think I think the in the the bear in the movie. Yeah. Do you think I Brock Lesnar could take a grizzly bear? No. Nope. What about cocaine Brock Lesnar? Nope. <laughs> no. like, bro, he's gonna die. He's he's gonna gonna die. <laughs> I don't think you're taking on a grizzly bear. Really? I think you take on a grizz grizzly bear, you're gonna be uh, you're done. All right, we're gonna do one more hot take for Josh. Okay. And then Bluey. Fucking <laughs> <Okay>, next. <laughs> Bluey next. Fucking Rob and see shit this episode. Long distance relationships can work. For one person. <laughs> For one person? One person only. For one of you. Have you ever, you guys ever done a long distance relationship? Any no. in your life? I don't, I don't think so. Not yeah. that I can remember. Well, I've define never... distance. Like same state, same city, certain amount of mileage. Farthest you're willing to drive her ass. Go. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking two and a half hours. <laughs> that sounds like a personal experience. Danny, <laughs> Oh, maybe 45 minutes, maybe? 45 minutes. That was a fucked up Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Spent five and a half hours on the road that day. These are all theoreticals, guys. We're married, okay? Five oh, this is before my wife. <laughs> I'm a virgin. This is before my wife. Danny's a virgin. virgin. <laughs> uh, I'm probably, uh, I'd say an hour tops, bro. I ain't driving pretty further than an hour. Two and a half hours is quite the distance, bro. I hope you put it down, dog. So can... <laughs> you just handle it yourself. It'll only take about five, ten minutes. You're set, you know? I yeah. questioned the first time I went out there because I was past Tehachapi. I was out in Cal City. 
Damn. So Air Force Base and everything. What the fuck am I doing out here? Like, they didn't even have streets. It was dirt roads, no signs. I got lost. I legit had to ask a dude that was stopped on the corner, like, what's the name of this fucking street? So I learned the two, three times going down there, show up during the daytime. Otherwise, nope, because there was no Google GPS map shit or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. It was just map quest. Here's the paper. Find the fucking street. Left and at the with Burger King. Everything with dirt. Like, <laughs> no. So distance, no, that was regrettable. But, oh, yeah. yeah. It's a long time. I still can't believe two and a half hours, dude, from Cheeks, though. <laughs> Clapping Cheeks. Clapping Cheeks, hours. dude. What the fuck you talking about? Bro, two and a half, dude, that's too long to be clapping cheeks, Doug. No, thank you. That doesn't sound fun to me. <laughs> we gonna do one more round or what are we doing? Where, where are we at? We got more. 10 minutes to kill right here. Let's, let's, do, do, let's do another round. Catfishing someone should be punishable by law. I'm gonna say no. Because I say you got got, you got got. You know what I mean? I think if the person's doing it and trying to like scam you and take money, then I think that's. That's a that's that's a different story. That's then that's where you draw a line. I think I think they I think if somebody's gonna put some different picture and sell themselves to something else and you go for it, I think that's like you said. I think it's like well, so when I think of catfishing, that's what I think of right. is the uh, like you know yeah, some dude pretending to be some chick somewhere or whatever the fuck you know. <laughs> you, you ever been catfished? They get catfished and they're like, catfished? oh, by the way, you know, and then you find out and they get all mad. You've seen the show, you have know you, what I mean? Have you catfished? Have I been catfished? Hey, have you been catfished or catfished somebody? Are you a catfisher? <sighs> Was I the catfish? <laughs> we want to know. Clary minds want to know. Um, I think I've been catfish, bro. I'm, I'm going to say yeah. Did you send dude. pictures? <laughs> Did I send pictures? Did you no. send pictures? No, no. It was like flip phone days, bro. You know what I mean? It's all pixelated and shit. Take you 15 minutes to Look like fucking little, download like it. Circle still Tomb Raider spinning. triangle titties, dude. Like it. Just, to, <laughs> just to see a little weeder. Oh, man. Uh, have you been catfished? Uh, I don't think so. No? I'm not. I never really. <laughs> said, I don't think well, so. Well, okay, okay. Let me say it like this. I, I never really did the online, you know, kind of dating, talking to people stuff. You know what I'm saying? I never really did that. So I don't think I've ever been catfished. I feel like I've been laughing for like 15 minutes straight. So I'm You've sorry. been laughing I'm for sorry. exactly 22 minutes and 34 I'm seconds. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> that fucking apple flavored weed was good, dude. What can I say? You know? You're welcome. Like, yeah. Josh, you ever been catfished? Nope. Nope. If you're going to drive two and a half hours, you better not be catfished, dude. Tell Which you what, are, if you drove two and a half hours and you were catfished, do it anyways, because you took two and a half hours. Were either of you guys, like, <laughs> single when dating apps were kind of a big thing? No. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, same here. Even, even if I was, I don't think I'm the type of person that would do a dating app. That's just weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd really do it. I don't know. Does it does that does that stuff work even for anybody? I don't know. I, don't I think everybody's know. weird, you know. Like, like what are you gonna do? I, I meet another weird question. person? <laughs> what happened? You're just gonna meet another weird person? Yeah, I don't know, dude. I mean, there's people. I mean, I have friends that have met people through dating apps that have been in long term relationships. Every uh, most people I know that met people on dating apps, they're going out and they're fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Tag them all below, Danny. <laughs> You're all fucking weird. You're all fucking weird. <laughs> You're fucking weird. Um. <laughs> Go to the next hot take. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. <laughs> Using paper straws is pointless. Pointless if you're still drinking from a plastic cup. That's a pretty solid fucking argument. Yay, mean G. Uh, remember Wait, when it was like to that? save the turtles, dude? Like turtles were just doing coke with straws on the fucking sea or whatever. What was it? the turtles would swallow them or something? What? Would the turtles like eat the straws? And is that how it happened? The straw was getting stuck Lodged in their, in their nose. nose. But we didn't know why. The, uh, yeah, why the they're fuck? doing coke. You know what I mean? Who would win in a fight? Cocaine bear or cocaine turtle? I mean, cocaine bear could go at that turtle for a while. And he's just chilling in his shell, dude, smoking it up. You know? Fucking Depending just getting... on which way he's laying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, dude. I think, I think the turtle would put up a longer fight than a human. Because it can go, it's because it's got a shell. It's got a shell. You know? You ain't got no shell. I mean, if I had a shell. <laughs> shell. You get in there and just smoke weed? Just fucking smoke weed in the shell, in dude. Your shell, just All day. Up. Yeah. Just chill in your shell. Yeah, dude. Um, it's, 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 it's a solid argument. No, I get it. The, yeah, it kind of And paper straws fucking suck, dude. Like, yeah. 
you have that shit in your drink for longer than like 30 minutes and it's you're fucking drinking pieces of paper. It's gross. You know what bothers me more than paper straws? Ice machines. I thought you were going to say trap shows. Trap shows. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. Ice machines? Ice machines are gross, gross. dude. I That's don't put ice in my drink from like... I don't want to. From seen fast it. food places. Yeah. Because I see how they load them. And I, and I worked for a Carl's Jr. for a really long time. And as many times as I saw somebody load them, I don't think I ever saw anybody clean it. I seen a, so, <laughs> I seen a dude that ran a business on TikTok. And Allegedly. They clean machines. They clean those machines. They're fucking disgusting. The ones that he's... Yeah. Yeah. I just... I've just... And honestly... The temperature that the drink comes out of from the soda fountain is good enough for me. Yeah? Yeah. So you're, you're a no ice? I'm a no ice dude. Yeah? Norm I mean, unless I'm having a mixed drink, that's when I like it. Well, this, this came from not, you know, one of those. That's your home fridge. Yeah, it's my home fridge. <laughs> the home fridge? Didn't come from the bacteria fridge. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear about uh, McDonald's? What happened to McDonald's, bro? They're lame. Fucking bitching <laughs> about... Bitching about giving people raises and they're like, oh, it, it's hitting our bottom dollar and they raise, the they're raising prices you. and you're just kind of like, at what point do you cut into your fucking profit a bit and suck it up instead Bro. of fucking passing it off on What's everybody? What's the Big Mac now? 20 bucks? Somebody was, saying, somebody was saying it was one state where somebody ordered it. They were saying it was like almost like $18. Which I wouldn't buy a Big Mac meal if it was eight dollars. Well, Most combos Vegas. everywhere are about twenty bucks now, dude. Well, that anywhere. McDonald's is fucking garbage, dude. It's garbage. I I'm I, live I get in, it. I live in Southern California. Yeah. You know how Southern Californians love their In and Out. We have In and Out. Fuck McDonald's. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm glad that my kids are slowly learning more about In and Out, and they want to have that more over McDonald's these yeah. days. Because for the longest time, it was fucking chicken nuggets from McDonald's all the time. If I do go to McDonald's, I usually just get a fucking some chicken nuggets. Or burger-wise, the only one I'll grab is like the Quarter Pounder. That's it. Yeah. What's your go-to McDonald's meal, Danny? Even though you don't like it. Uh, it fucking cheeseburger. Fries. Maybe a nugget. I'm going to guess Josh's fish filet. Or a Danish Big Mac. <laughs> A Danish Big Mac. What's it's that? Basically everything but the meat. Oh, okay, nice. They do it by accident a lot. <laughs> I had that happen when I still ate meat. That they gave me everything but the meat. But that's so how, how is that? I'm so pissed, dude. How are you ordering something from McDonald's? Do you? Is it like? Does it affect you if it's cooked on the same kind of grill and prepared? No. Okay, because I, I you know don't worry that about some that too people, much. No, yeah. like because. Having my kids, they still eat meat and everything. My stomach never went fully complete. Like I still, I've had chicken broth before with soup and stuff. Okay. But as far as eating an actual piece of chicken or meat, I have not had any of that for like 16 years. Yeah, but I'm time. not that, I don't want to say anal. I'm not that uptight where if we're eating a pizza and there's pepperoni on there, oh, I ain't going to fucking eat the pizza now. No, I don't care. Or if you shouldn't put fish and meat in the same damn pan. But if that happened and I was eating a piece of fish, I wouldn't throw a shit fit other than I just asked for a discount because my fish tastes like meat. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say something and then I coughed and I fucking forgot, dude. <laughs> coughed it out? I coughed it out, bro. It happens. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, but ordering at restaurants is not a problem for me. In and out, I just get a grilled cheese animal style. Yeah, I've done the no meat for a while, and the hardest part was trying. Whenever you're out and about trying to trying like, to find something, you nowadays go to a place, you're it's like, so much easier. Yeah. Like ten years ago, it was a lot more difficult than it is now. Like before, Impossible Burgers even existed. Then I was kind of like, well, shit, where am I gonna go? Have you ever seen the? Which, by uh, the way, Impossible Burgers are delicious. Dude. They are. They're, They're fucking awesome. Have you for the seen uh, yeah. Netflix has a documentary called The Game Changers? Uh -huh. and it, you seen it? My wife watched. There's that. a there's a part in there where the they have a couple uh, Miami Dolphin football players, and one of the guys eats like a veggie burrito. The other dudes eat like chicken or. And then it all changes. <laughs> uh, it's crazy because they take blood samples from the three athletes, and the athlete that didn't eat the meat has a lot less fat in their blood. And they recover just, faster from the game and stuff oh, too. Like way their yeah, body it's recuperates. Like they're, they're studying that, and it's like, yeah, it's always it's always been. 
athletes, protein, protein. And I know that that's like a fucking, that's going to stick for a very long time, but there's some stuff that shows otherwise. I felt bad for one of the wives though, because at one point she was cooking for her husband because he was trying to do it healthy. Then they saw the benefits. Then it turned into three or four players. By the end of it, she's cooking for the whole fucking team. Yeah. Oh, so shit. she has to show <laughs> no, up. With, she she was she has making, a business. And stuff yeah, too. She, yeah, yeah. She was, a she was making. She was doing like fucking Meal cauliflower, fucking like chicken wings. Yeah. She cooks like legit, legit it really good, good stuff. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks amazing. Um, I've tried it, I've done it for a bit. Um, I really love how I feel when I do it, but like I said, there's those times it's just really hard, you mm-hmm. know, when you're like out and about, you're like, there's nothing, you know, it sucks. And with that, we'll be right back. What's up, guys? Danny and Mark from The Last Days of War. What's going on? Just want to remind you guys that you guys can follow us on all our social media pages. It's the, the TikTok and the Instagram and Facebook and Threads. Those are all the last days of war. And X is the last days of war because the is too long. Uh, check out our merch. That's a great way to support the band. It is in our bios on all of our social media pages. Anything else, Danny? Have a good one. Back to the show. We're officially back. We're back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're officially back. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Um, she got a little crazy outside, dude. You know what I mean? Huh? What's first on the agenda, Danny? Shots. Shots. Cheers. Cheers. A little Jack Daniels? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So much dead air when we do that. <laughs> we should put a little, uh, some music. Some music, some drinking music. A little jazzy, snappy, you know, some shit like that. But what, what do you think, Rob? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting weird around here, guys. Around here, dude. We got Rob oh, here hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. He's looking a little blue. He has not yeah. blinked once. He's <laughs> talented. But we haven't talked about... The facial hair. Oh. Dude. I saw a a TikTok you did earlier today, and I saw this whole thing, and I was like, oh, shit. Who's that Grizzly Adams over there? I thought it was a filter. I don't know. I think I might keep it. Just let it keep growing. See what it does? See what it does. Why not? I like it. Why not? Yeah. That's what I'm doing with this right now. I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to. Let everything grow. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Do a caveman for a bit. See what happens. Do it, dude. Just kind of. I've been. I've been. Your hair just just goes straight, huh? Just yeah, straight up. It's like, it's really like, like fine. Like Dennis the Menace. Yeah. So it, you know? once it gets long, then it just all falls down. Like it has like no body. It would just be. Yeah. She said. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking flying right now. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. All right, what we got? What we got? We got uh, what we got going on here? Bring me the horizon. Bring me. Bring me the horizon. Bring me the horizon. Did I? I was like, did I pronounce that right? You did it right. You got yeah. it. First try. Fucking. So tell us what what's going on with this uh, here. There was a show. So there was a show in in Indonesia. Indonesia. Did I? How do we? <laughs> it's Indonesia. One of those two. You Indonesia. Okay. You got it. All right, bro. <laughs> There's a show there. And they canceled their show, like, I don't know if it was halfway through or a few songs in. 11 songs in. 11 songs in, actually, it was. But now I think about it. Uh, <laughs> You've got an external female voice in your head going on there? Everybody hear that, too? <laughs> Mom? <laughs> what were you going to say? No, go ahead, go ahead. Give them, and I'll tell you something. So, yeah, so... They stopped the show, but apparently it was for safety reasons. Yes. Uh, they noticed that monitors and lighting and basically anything that was on a pole was looked like it was ready to come down. I heard something about a, a, some truss that was not looking, mm. visually inspecting it, something was not right. It's some, that's kind of what I heard. Yeah. I also read in the article that they like offered, they were like, hey, if you guys, you know, maybe take down the screen or take down this, you know, like they were trying to compromise with them, and they wouldn't. So once they canceled the show, apparently a riot broke loose, and they just fucking tore the place down. So that's where, when I was, I was kind of going, 
you know, something hit me right when I got to that part in the article was that they played 11 songs and then they canceled the show because there was a safety concern. It's not and like they then, didn't get a show, bro. 11 that's what songs, I, bro. That's the part where I was like, okay, because most, a lot of contracts with bands, a lot of times they will have like a, you know, there's some guarantees and there's like, you will get paid and you have to be, you have to be on stage performing for this, this amount, amount of time. Th those are things that are worked in. Um, I've dealt with some artists in my time that there was a reason why that was built into their contract because they have fallen short of that and had to have issues with reimbursing money. Oh, really? Right. So, so it's a contractual thing. So, uh, 11 songs seems like if you were to play 11 songs, I'm going to say that's like more than an hour. Bro, we right? played, we played, well, it all depends I mean, on the length of your songs, but we played what, seven, eight songs in our last half in our hour. set? Yeah, our set's And seven, it's 30 minutes. Six. That's eight songs. Six, seven? Yeah, six, six, six seven. I think it's seven songs. So when I, when I heard 11 I songs, I was like, that, <laughs> that, the headliner was on stage for 11 songs. I think you had a show. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, I, I think, see. yeah. I mean, I guess cutting it short sucks, but at the same time, if it's a safety concern, I don't know if writing's what the fuck you do in that situation, you know? Right. Yeah, like you you fucked up the show and it's bullshit. That sucks too, but whatever, right? It was a fucking safety concern. Yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Josh? Say not no more. <laughs> well, understand this. Understand this. What what conversation would people be having if they didn't stop the show and something did fucking happen and a lot of people died? Yeah. Right? And we'd all be going, eh, fucking, you know? Fucking yeah. Thoughts so and it's, prayers all day. If it is Indonesia, suspicious. there'd be another benefit. Right? Shit, man. Yeah. I mean, I I personally think they made the right call. If you yeah. think into the safety of your fans, not not, not only yourself, but, you know, Bro, else nobody there. dies. Yeah. That's the rule. You know what I'm saying? Nobody we can dies. go a day with nobody dying. I think it's a good day, you know? Yeah. yeah. Nobody but, needs to die at a concert. Oh, they're to have fun, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, there's been other times, too. I've heard situations where there's riots that have broken out at concerts. I mean, like... I think this is clearly a different situation than like Axl Rose no, they, going like, oh, the camera guy's taking pictures of me. Fuck you, we're out. And then there's a riot. Like, I think this is two completely different situations. Or like Lauren Hill, yeah. who's two hours late to her show, and then offbeat and the sound's horrible, and you leave five songs in. That was my weekend, guys. <laughs> Tell us, tell us about your uh... holy shit. So where man. did you go? You saw you saw Lauren Hill. Yes, at the Kia. What is it? The fucking at the Forum. Oh, the Forum. Yes, okay. she was there at the Forum. Yeah, that's the one that's across the street from the big stadium, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the one. <laughs> from SoFi. Yes, from SoFi. Yes, correct. Okay, so anyways, now that we established where it's at, <laughs> it's on the Hollywood it's Park fucking, property. Yeah. Uh. So, wife and I got tickets to go see Lauryn Hill. I'll give you a little rundown really quick. I was a huge fan of her album, uh, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, when I was in high school. It was one of two albums that I played nonstop when I was going through some stuff. And uh, so that had a lot of special meaning to me. I was like, cool, yeah, let's fucking go see Lauryn Hill. Who knows if we'll ever get to see it again, you know? Yeah. So we go, the show starts at 7.30. She has an opener, a DJ. Proceeds to DJ for like an hour and a half, dude. And then all of a sudden they like rap, like somebody walks up to him and they rapidly cut his set. He's like, all right, man, it's time for me to get out of here. See you guys later. And we're thinking, okay, cool. Nothing. Silence. She's coming out next. They brought out a second DJ. <laughs> and that DJ played like four or five of the same songs as the first DJ played. Aww. So I was like, bro. Um, so for those of you who don't know, apparently this is a thing with her I was not aware of. I'm not I don't I've never really followed her touring schedule so I didn't I didn't know that this was going on but apparently she's usually extremely late to shows and it was about 2 hours maybe 2 hours, almost maybe 2 hours 20 minutes before she decided to come out and then the sound was just not great she I felt like she was like not singing 
the higher parts, like she would just pull back and let the background singers do it, and you know, whatever. Um, and she wasn't, she was never on time with the band. I felt like the band was just slightly ahead of her, or she was behind on the music, however you want to put it. Um, I don't know, man, it just really bummed me out, and I was just like, I'm down to leave if you are because this is kind of going to ruin her image for me. Like my, yeah, what, what sounds... her album means to me. I didn't like, she had a full band, like orchestra on stage with her. Did they sound good? They were awesome. They were awesome. But I think the problem was, well, what she was saying was that her brass section's too loud. So she can't hear what's going on up there is what she was saying. Fucking she had, walk away. Dude, she stopped the second song. She stopped it completely. Had them do like a sound check. And then go back into the song and then stopped it again. Fucking I was brass. like, are we at fucking rehearsal right now? Fucking what is going on? Fucking brass. Dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so it was just crazy, man. It bummed me out. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to fucking, I don't like openly talking shit about other artists like that. Yeah. But like, it's just one of those things. It's like. Well, you had a bad experience. I had a as bad a experience. Fan. And as, as a fan, a fan bad it bummed me out. Yeah. And I couldn't recommend anybody going to her shows. All the songs that she played off the album, not one of them was the album version. They just did like different versions of it with the band, which is cool. But if I'm there to sing along to an album that's like nostalgic to me that I thought you were just going to play the album the way it was, you know, yeah. kind of bummed me out. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Have dude. you ever had a concert you went to where you were just kind of disappointed? Yeah, but it was more of where we got stuck sitting. Yeah. Um, sound wise was kind of an issue, but it wasn't as bad as people were making it out to be. Um, before I had, I'm trying to think how long ago this was. I hadn't had my son yet, so this has to be at least like 12, 13 years ago. My dad's a huge Def Leppard fan, and he had a timeshare in Vegas, so yearly he would follow the band and their tour, and he'd always get tickets to either the California show or the Vegas show. And he'd make a weekend out of it with my sister and myself. We'd go up there and go see him. So I've seen them at the Hard Rock. I've seen them at the MGM. And I'm trying to think, we were at the Hard Rock and how they have the upstairs venue. Right. I think they were doing their residency when they first started. My dad thought he was getting seats in the balcony that were going to be near the first row. We landed up getting stuck right behind this fucking pillar in front of oh, us. Oh, that's right, <laughs> like, man. Directly in front of us. And then the speakers were right in front of that. <sighs> so all the sound was in front of us. And because of that, we had the issue of we're looking at the stage, but listening to that, and something's not lining up. <laughs> and me being the drummer, I'm watching him, and he had a light-up kick drum, and he'd kick. Then I'd hear, later. So it was like the delay itself or something going wow, that's, on. That's yeah. crazy. It yeah. was weird, yeah. but... You, you may have just been totally in a really fucked play, place where, yeah. Seeing know. them at MGM was cool. Or it was Mandalay Bay. That's when I was with my dad and my sister and her husband and one of my dad's old neighbors. This guy was from England, had a really cool accent, but he's the type of dude that you see at the shows that he's ready to single and he's ready to mingle with older ladies. He was trying to pick up chicks the whole entire time we're there and like not woman's biting onto it, nothing at all. My dad and I, no interest at all. <laughs> They're coming up trying to talk to him and he's looking at us like, what the hell? Like, what? They don't like my accent? No, nothing? <laughs> I think it has to do with the fact that you're short, little bald dude, and you're trying too hard. Just like, let it rock, bro. Let him get a little bit drunker. Then you'll be good. You'll be good. She got to find uh, women with Danny DeVito fetishes. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one for me has been, and, and it's, it's kind of a funny one, because I feel like I have a, there's bands that I have been to their shows, and it's like, it always hits and it's always sounds amazing and it's always great, mm -hmm. you know? And then there's some of those artists who it's like, sometimes it lines up and sometimes it doesn't, you know? I've got a band like that where my wife's disappointed because of, I won't go see Incubus live uh -huh. now just because of the way he sounds versus the way he used to morning view way back when, like when they did the Honda tour, Honda civic tour, when they were giving away the car. Yeah. That was the last time I saw him where he sounded on point and sounded really well. Otherwise, it's kind of what you talk about with shows where you don't really get the album version of the song. He changes something or he doesn't sing it in that same key. 
and with my wife loving his voice, it's one of those, like, I don't want to go through the trouble of taking you there for you to be just disappointed. Like, yeah. what you go through where, oh, I don't want to build it up. And then you look at me like, why are we sitting here? So I showed her YouTube videos of it just to show I wasn't lying. And she's like, damn, it's kind of depressing. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite bands is Deftones. And uh, I've it's one of those bands I've seen so many times. So there's been... Like I can tell you right now, uh, Greek Theater, I've seen them there. Sounded amazing. They were on point. Everything was, you know, great. I've seen them at like the Glass House in P P Pomona when they were starting out. You go and it's just, you hear Chino just, all you can hear is screaming and just, you know. So it's it's a, it's a weird thing when you've seen some bands and, and it's a hit or miss, you know. And then some bands, you know, they're just, they're always on point, and it's just yeah. one of those things. Um, yeah. My other buddy, uh, my other buddy Josh, uh, he actually went to the show. Uh, he is a big Deftones fan as well, and he's he says the same thing about them. Like he's like it's hit or miss, man. There's you, there's you been there's been gamble. a few Deftones concerts where I'm looking over at the console at the sound guy, and I'm like, like what are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna step in here. Like I'm literally like seconds from just like going. I'm but you you know. Um, there's a line that you don't cross, you yeah. know, but definitely you, you're fighting that feeling of like, dude, you are killing this concert right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Um, Have you ever personally done that as a sound guy? Like, working for an artist, or artist and they pissed you off to the point that at the show, you just said, fuck that, and you screwed with the sound. <laughs> It's a okay. great question. Not <laughs> name, <laughs> you don't question. have to name drop. <laughs> no, I won't say any names here. Uh, I've had an, I've had an artist on stage that, and this wasn't like this. Okay. I'm going to carefully not. Yeah. Is it who I think it is. No, 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 no. Like, so, allegedly folks. <laughs> okay. So this was a band that had their own board on stage. So, so anybody who doesn't know, uh, they had their own in-ear monitor rig. So we were basically running mics into them. And then we were going into the house split, which then was going to the monitor console and the front of house console. So it's basically, here we go in, there's a split there, it's going here, here, split. So they're getting it, we're getting it, we're getting it out, fr out front, right? So... Calm. Sound check comes, I'm out front, front of house, and the band after was a really big, huge 80s band. And so there wasn't a whole lot of set change time in between. If I could tell you the circumstances, you would be like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Like, I get why it was that way. And holy shit, what a crazy show to watch. But the monitor guy, who I've known for a long time that I... They get into a fight and the monitor guy tells him that if you touch this or that, I'm going to break your arms. There was a lot of, you know, yelling, screaming, and I'm out front of the house. I walk up there. They're doing this, that, this. So anyways, they play, the show ends, and the guy in the band specifically told me that they were staying and that they we were going to be able to leave everything patched. And this guy just walks up to his board and starts pulling everything. And I've oh, got this fuck. massive artist on stage, and I've got like 48 inputs. Just all thrown. Just sitting on the fucking floor. I swear to God. And... uh Basically, that same audio guy that was running monitors that started a fight with him and they did all this shit, the guy literally fucking scooped all the fucking XLRs up and went fucking boom, 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 and went, mm, what's this one? And that one's a fucking, that goes to that snake. That's got to be fucking that, that, this. Ran out front, fucking fired it up, went. First time? Every, every fucking input. That's dude, crazy. Was, it, was, it was crazy. So we, we got it off. Under a situation, I was just kind of sitting there like, bro, you're, what the fuck did you just do? Yeah. Like, you, you got to fucking play the lottery, dude. Like, holy shit. But anyways, it was one of those situations where there was a conversation that happened in between set change that was pretty much like, you're going to get off my stage right now, or yeah. you better get your shit and get out of here. Yeah. That's, that's where we're going to leave it, you know? And that's, I haven't had that many situations like that happen in my career. Uh, normally a lot of people are just amazing and really cool, you know, uh, and I've experienced a shit ton of that, but I've experienced a few people like that. You're just like, 
bro. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your <clears throat> stance on tipping the sound guy after the end of the night? Like, if you were an up and coming band, you had a good show, do you think. Up and coming? Dude, no way. Don't tip me. Don't even think about it. You know what I'm saying? But if you're like that big fucking massive band coming through and you're in between guys and I'm dealing with you and y'all of your shit, mm -hmm. yeah, you should give a tip. I'm just. I would. If I was a big band and I was going through and I had a guy that fucking at the venue, like, I would kick him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd kick him huge. Yeah. I try and be buddies with the sound guy because that's the one guy that's either going to make or break your show, especially I've being always, a drummer. You fuck I've up walking the in the door to venue, you fuck up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always made it a point to talk to the sound guy, too. I'm like, you know. How do you want to do this, bro? Like, okay, I got three DIs. I have my own XLRs. Do you want to use mine or you want to use your I own? Could give I, you, I could give you a really cool example of an artist uh, that walked up to me one day on stage and I was just kind of blown away by the dude's just demeanor and his professionalism. Because when I first saw him, I was like, you know, but uh, uh, Mitch Lucker from okay. uh, Suicide Silence. Rest in peace. They used to come through the Grove of Anaheim, which mm -hmm. I worked at, and they would do California Metal Fest. And that guy walked in, and I was kind of like, who's this surfer kid, tatted up surfer kid that's talking to me right now? And I'm sitting here, like, running around doing shit. And uh, he hands his in-ears in -ears to me, and, and he, you know, I kind of, like, a few minutes of him kind of hanging out, like, got the sense, like, oh, he's, he's chill, you know? So I was like, what do you need, you know? He came up. He came up to me with the craziest request. Uh, so spread him. He, no. <laughs> How you feel about Peggy? So basically, uh, he had his inner unit. I I sent him a stereo send, and not on the send from the console, but in his inner unit, he literally 4K just plus 15. And I looked at him, and it's and I was like, dude. When we went through soundcheck, I saw how much I was sending that guy. And I'm like, bro, we are destroying your fucking ears. You have to be going deaf. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I was, dude, and I, I've i done that same thing for him a few times in my career when they would come through. And every time I'm just like, dang. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. I, was, I couldn't imagine sitting there. Could you imagine with your click just mm. banging in your ear? With I get to a certain just... point, but yeah, like, because I, I do constantly ask you sometimes, hey, can you give me a little bit more click? Yeah. But that's because I'd rather you full volume as much as you can give me, and then I control my pack just in case of, like, with certain songs. Some stuff's a little bit louder than others. Or with the monitor mix, I'd I rather be able to do it though, myself. I always wondered, though, and it would, be, it would be such a crazy thing to be able to talk to him about, have a conversation with did he do that because the way he sang? Sang, that's what I'm thinking. Is with the 4K, the way you do your tongue and that type of vocal, did it like help him? Yeah, like I never it had. It I never. To be that I would have loud. loved to be able to ask him, like, what the fuck is that? Because I was always like, yeah. How does that not hurt? Yeah. It's one of those dudes that I always think of because of that and how cool of a guy he was and that request. And it was like one of those things that I just, as an audio guy for years, I just one of those memories. You're that, like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of like. How's he not bleeding from the ears? Speak, speaking of uh, losing hearing, I thought I what? had. I thought I what? had bad hearing. Fucking sharing a fucking sharing, sharing a fucking signal with Rob. I found out how fucking deaf that dude is. <laughs> He's, He's like, turn it all the way up, pack all the way up. Not only are you boosting him, I know. He's completely cranked to ten, and I'm like. No, Out you're you're going. I'm good, and he's yeah. like, give me like, more. he's more. like, give me seven dB. Like he's, he's like, like, we're that's that's a big. I can't feel the bass in my ears. It's a good step. I yeah. was like, dang, dude. I was like, you can't hear that. He's like, no. Nope. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Mm -mm. And then he's got the tracks. Rob. What are your thoughts on that, Rob? <laughs> he, can't, he can't hear us. <laughs> uh, uh, hot take. You want to do a hot take? Let's do some hot takes. Hot bro. takes, real quick. When I first. Saw the picture of this. I thought it was a fucking like spicy challenge chip thing or something. I was like, what is it? What do you got there? <laughs> I thought it was hot tamale candy. Hot tamales? Hot takes. Movies are better than books. Mm, okay. I think that I'm going to say this right now. It depends on, it depends on the book. It depends on the movie. Yeah. I'm a 50, 50 because there are some books that they tried to make a movie and it did not work. Yeah. yeah. Or there's some books that when you, when you read it, 
the picture that it paints to you doesn't translate in that movie in the same way. Um, I don't know. Do you have any? I, I've like, honestly, I probably never have read, read a, a read a book. Uh, <laughs> read a book in general, <laughs> no. Read a book that had a movie adaptation to it as okay. well. Like I've, I've, I don't think. Like, you, let me give you an example. Like uh, Jurassic Park, yeah. is is kind of like the picture when I read that book. Um, it paints a lot different of a picture in my head than what what they did. From the yeah. Movie. Well, and also I, I've done the extended version of it, and I have it in audiobook as well, and I've done it on a long drive. And there's like a whole portion of that where it's like literally hours of them just talking about backstory as far as the corporation that's engine. So it's a lot different than than the than the movie. Yeah, it is the movie is a Hollywood movie. The book is definitely a book. You know, I know you guys being Star Wars fans, you read the Star Wars books. I never really read no. a lot of the Star Wars. I I know some of the storylines of them, but I've never really gotten into the reading the books. Mm. I've I've never read them either. I was just curious because like pe- people that have read the books that you know do the whole all oh, the fucking books better this and that you know fucking yeah. <laughs> so yeah no dude um well, I at, tend to I tend to watch movies about people I think I, I mean read books about people isn't Lord of the Rings the whole that whole meeting at the council for Lord of the Rings like when they do the fellowship and it's all of them and they're getting together going this is what we're gonna do I never watched one of those. Sorry. (laughs) I have not gone that road. Like, I couldn't. The book, that scene is, it's pages. It's the the only scene in the movie where they're not walking. That's all they do, right? Three movies? They just walk Lord of the Rings? Well, isn't that what life is? Just a series of moving things around? So, we're going to go into spoiler territory here. If you've never seen Lord of the Rings, I don't care. Fucking like... (laughs) I think you're safe. I watched... I remember I watched them with uh, Amanda, and I was like, uh, you know, whatever. And then in the last movie, fucking comes with dragons, right? They calls, he calls the dragons to come help them somewhere, and they go fly towards... I think they were... Weren't they eagles? Whatever they were, they could have fucking called them at the beginning of the movie. And just got there? And just got there. And just dropped... Wait, we could have <laughs> just flew over and, and just dropped, dropped the ring. In the- Why did you wait nine hours to tell me you had fucking dragons, bro? Because like- <laughs> we wanted to make money. We forgot. We wanted to make money and tell you a story. <laughs> when that happened, dude, I was so mad. I was like, what is this movie? I, yeah, I've, I've heard that from people where it's they've put that into perspective and I'm like, like, only could have called him at any point. Yeah. He waited till they were about to die. He's like, oh, oh yeah. by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, I called us an Uber. By the way, it's I got to just wrap this There's an Uber coming. Don't like, worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> if I can walk I called you an Uber. You're, you're right on the doorstep. It'll be there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Thanks, Gandalf. Hit him with the hot take, Danny. It's hot take? Fucking Gandalf. Beauty pageants for children should be banned. I agree. Yep. They're, they're weird to me. Yeah, they're weird. Yeah. I never I never really got that. I think that's kind of, is that like a... It's that dance mom's TV show and stuff. Right. Is yeah. that kind of like the dad who yells at his kid because he's not doing great in Little League type? Yeah, but normally it's you with know? the mom and the kid. Right, no, yeah. but it's the, the equivalent, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the equivalent. That's, what I, that's just where I'm like, that. Yeah. I feel like that's the I don't equivalent. Know. It's weird. I don't, you know, it's just, it's weird. And it's usually fucking ironically ran by the save the children people first. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've never looked at those and went, oh, I'm going to like go get my children involved and I want to go to it. I've never. Well, yeah. you, you got boys, right? They got all boys. Thank you. Throwing them in some beauty pageants, bro? None of them have approached me yet and said they <laughs> want to be involved with a beauty pageant yet, so uh, we haven't crossed that bridge. You know? We'll see. I got I got some that are young, so. It's true. Yeah. You know, we'll see where they go. True. Him with the hot take, Josh. <laughs> Hit him. Fucking box. We got a minute. 30 seconds. People have the right Ten. to be anti-vax. Sure. Hey, you know what? You know what? Sure. I think. I like, think. I, like whatever, dude. I think you, you do you. I think I you, do me. Yeah, everybody has a choice, and I think that with choices come sometimes other choices, yeah. and sometimes 
if those choices, I think that, you know, there's some companies that say you got to get vaxxed and, you know, if we want to make laws about it, then we make laws. If we don't, then we don't. Mm -hmm. And we fucking whatever. And we could just sit around and fucking cry about shit. I don't got time to worry about it. If yeah. you took the shot, you did. You did. If you if did not, not, I don't care. Hey, you know what? If you feel like it's safe for you, then you go do you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like drugs, bro. Do it or not. And on that, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, on that, we're going to call it an episode, folks. You guys, please take this time to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're watching. Do the same wherever you're listening. Uh, check out all of our social medias and check out the merch in the bio.